Hey everyone, I'm out at the Dakota Flea Market. I just got done over in this room filming my friend Tony Huber, so watch out for that YouTube video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll put the link in the description. Now, I did my walk around and I've come back. I'm going to interview my good buddy Skip. He's busy helping some customers right now, but we'll do an interview. We'll talk about gold and silver markets, collectible coins, and a lot of other things as well. So be sure to stick around. This should be a good, fun one, and there's always a lot of great information that Skip likes to share. We can do, though, we could do a, let's do this just for the fun of it. It's a beautiful coin. It is. Yeah. So. While they're talking about that, I'm gonna film some of the stuff Skip brought out to the flea market here. Oh, I got a cool, did we do this one before, that 1861? I think we did, and we made the joke that it uh, could have been in Abraham Lincoln's oh, pocket. <laughs> there you go. So we had a grant. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we got some nice shiny silver out here today. This video will be a little choppy and a little chaotic. 574. Yeah. I should take it. I won't put it in my book, but if I leave it in a slab, I got it in my book that I'm trying to fill. That just wouldn't deter from it, would it? What kind of, do you use Dansko just, album? Like one of them. Like yep. the brown Dansko, yep. yeah. I would. Just be real careful when you yeah. put it in there. Don't yeah. touch it with your hands or okay. anything. Okay. Yep. So that, that's why I want to put it in my book. Yeah. Put gloves on or something because yeah. if you finger if I you the books from this man right here okay <laughs> yeah if you put a fingerprint on it joel it'll it'll show up eventually oh. so be real careful putting it in the book yeah, so okay. i would put so, cotton gloves on or okay. even like those uh you know those black gloves that are like skin tight on your hands or you definitely don't want to print that one up because okay. that one's be careful putting it in the sleeve yeah okay. that one's as fresh as they come that's right. a real nice one good. well skip hi Hi there. Doug. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Say, I wanted to ask you, because you're the aforementioned expert on all things. Oh, really? Because people want to know, um, gold closed for a closing price at an all-time high on Friday. Okay. Now, it's had intraday higher points, but it closed in the U.S. at $2,083 per ounce. So there's a lot of uh, gold fever going on right now, and I just went through my own paperwork for uh, January and February and realized we sold a lot of gold in those couple of months um, while it was climbing up and racing up near an all-time high. So now that it's actually crossed over an all-time high, do you, how do you think that's gonna affect the silver market? Do you think people, because now it's gonna be in the news, right? right. So now people are gonna be talking about gold. So how's that gonna affect silver? Do you think silver is gonna soon follow because silver has been kind of a dud it hasn't went up there, much in the last couple of months to be a correlation but sometimes in sympathy they'll follow each other mm -hmm. like friday silver did make a nice little run also i mean it was it did uh they went down in the morning but then from the morning it was almost a dollar change by the time it closed it was up 47 cents on the day or something right so it was a nice move for silver too at the same time uh but it, it, you can drive yourself a little bit crazy trying to get correlations between all of this stuff because as soon as you think you've got a correlation and you, all your charts figured out and everything, it'll do something different. Right. Or something else will happen that's outside the parameters of what you've been dealing with that changes everything. Yeah. Right. Bottom it's, line is it's unpredictable at best. I guess uh, what my customers are, are more than likely going to gravitate towards, in my opinion, is silver now because silver seems like an even better buy compared to gold because gold is at that all-time high number. Now, not everybody operates in that way. How have things been for you and your shop the last several weeks? Because it's been almost a month now since we talked last. Are you selling more gold than usual or about the same? And then uh, speak about silver as well. The well. last few months, we're selling more gold than usual. Okay. Okay, and that's continuing. Um, silver... Silver had slowed down a little bit. It seems to be picking up just a little bit again. So what in my small world, what does that mean? I don't know, but that's 
just been my experience on it. Yeah. Um, silver is a is a perceived better value at this point. Um, is it really? We don't know. We uh, we don't know the future. That's just all. Well, we don't. Going. We don't. Yeah. I've I've always been a guy that pays attention to the ratios, and I know not everybody does that. But we're still sitting close to a ninety to one ratio in the number of ounces of silver it takes to buy an ounce of gold. So usually when it's high like that, silver does sell better. But as you just said, you moved more gold than usual the last couple of months, and I have two in my own shop, and I just think that's for fear of missing out. You know, the people that see it on the news, oh, gold's a good investment, it's almost at an all-time high, where, well, that's maybe not the right time to buy it. You should have been buying it six months ago when it was 1800 but it, hindsight. It depends a little bit on your feelings about what the dollar is going to be worth in the future. So gold could be a real bargain right now if the dollar trashes itself in the future. Right. Right? So looking at it from that standpoint, we don't know that gold's a bad value because it's just up in price. Right. It just takes fewer or it takes more cheap dollars to buy it. Right. So the value of gold, as we've talked about, really doesn't change. It takes more or less U.S. dollars to buy it. That's perfectly put. Yeah, it's all all a reflection on dollar strength, really. Right. Um, and one thing, you know, with gold touching its uh, or passing an all-time high at closing, uh, the strength of the U.S. dollar dipped. It went from about a 106 to a 103. So those do tentative or uh, typically, I should say, have an inverse relationship. Yeah. So that's a good reason to They're say that happened. They're probably as closely connected as anything is anymore. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Joel. You want to come over here and show us what you bought? We're filming here. You're going to be famous in our own mind. So I tried to film this interaction, but I was having some microphone trouble. But this? this gentleman here just bought this beautiful coin from Skip. They did some pretty intense negotiations. <laughs> but in our best estimation, that's at least an MS-64. Can you flip it over? The reverse is beautiful. It's an 1883 Carson City. Uh, Skip and I both think that the back is maybe an MS-65+, plus, uh, where the front's probably a 64, so we net out at an MS-64. But, Joel, if you don't mind talking to the people here that are watching, you must be a Morgan Silver Dollar guy. Yes, that, I, that's a love of yours. So, what is it about the Morgans that you like so much? Just uh, the old West. I just love that. I just I want to get there to that uh, museum in Nevada. Okay. And I just I just I've been liking I've been really looking at these for a long time. I'm starting to put another book together. And okay. I, I like nice coins. Right. So I thought this was a very nice example. Oh, it is, and I know you have very good taste because that is probably the nicest Morgan in this whole place. Yeah. I'm not, well, you, you, you might have some more expensive. Do you have yeah. some higher grade? Um, I've got some nice, pretty nice Morgans. But yeah, but <laughs> I know. But that, that's a beautiful rock coin. I would really like to see more young people get into this hobby. It's really, it's, it's actually quite fun to, you know. How long have you been collecting? Uh, probably 15 years. You know, okay. I'm not, I'm not a really a, I'm still entry level to myself. You know? I just, I love all different types of you know, things. So, but I do love... Morgan dollars. Yeah, I do too. That's the Morgan set is a set that I've put a lot of time and love into in my personal life as well. And you it's you mentioned the Carson City Mint in Carson City, Nevada. That would be I fun. I would recommend everybody go to that if they possibly can. It's a very, very cool museum. Very cool. That is someplace I am gonna yep. visit. Bucket list item. I would love yep. to go there as well. It's like ten minutes south of Reno. Yeah. I've been to Reno, but I never, for some reason, oh, I just, didn't get to You can't the, even get lost. I, back it's then, the first just, exit into Carson City, yeah. and boom, there you are I, at the museum. They probably have a lot of signs, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Joel, you're, uh, obviously, you like Morgans. You what else do you Morgan, like? Sir? Do you like, Are you a metal collector, too? I like gold and buffaloes. Okay. So you dabble in both, gold, yeah, gold yeah. silver, collectibles. Yeah, and that's what most people find. Um, you know, it's it's hard to love one and not the other yeah, kind of thing. I've always loved gold, silver, and gold. I just recently, I've been getting into more to the more flexibility. Sure. But yeah, it's, it's just always been a, been a love of mine. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Thanks for agreeing to be on camera and show us your. He's also he's like 
into it too. He really loves the gold and silver too, and he's really into it. Well, that's good. That's that's something nice that you guys can talk about and enjoy together. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and being on camera with us and showing us your your great pickup today. Let's look at it one more time. All right. Because that is beautiful. That's a very very nice example. I imagine that came fresh from a roll. Yes. Oh. Or, you know, plucked out of a bag at Carson yeah, City, maybe. Yeah, just did not get handled very much. Yeah, it's it? a beautiful coin. Very yeah. beautiful. Great pickup. Well, Congrats. Good. Thanks. Thank you. You bet. That means a lot coming from a man like you, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. <laughs> Appreciate that. You bet. So, but yeah, Skip, I know you're busy, so... We'll uh, maybe cap it there. I think with all the stuff I filmed, we can maybe stitch together an interview. But do you have any parting words for everyone? Keep buying, keep stashing. So yeah. Won't put any money into it that you're going to have to take back out of it. So Because it could be a while. but It could. Be on the safe side. Have some gold and silver. You know, one thing from our last interview that you said, I've had many people in the shop repeat. It's... Don't be frustrated that the silver price is low. Because why would you want to pay more for it if it were high? Be happy it's low and keep adding to the stack. Keep buying. That's and keep right. buying. That's great advice. So, yeah. But thanks for your time as always. I appreciate it. Yep. No problem. Thank you. You bet.